That song, Dry Star, BBC Coventry in Warwickshire. Ten minutes time, prick up your ears if you suffer from stress, anxiety, and a lot of us do. I'm one of them, can't turn my head off. I would love to have an empty head. <laughs> Must be so easy for people with empty heads. If you're like me and just worry about absolutely everything, stay tuned. There's a lady called Brenda joining us in the studio who's going to teach us a technique called mindfulness. You can help train your mind um, basically to appreciate the present moment. We'll explain more in about 10 minutes' time. BBC Coventry and Warwickshire Travel. Ladies on the road with Phil. Uh, we'll be outlined for you in the next 20 minutes. Right now, though, here on BBC Coventry and Warwickshire, we are talking uh, about your mind. Now, do you find it difficult to focus completely on one thing at once? Because, of course, there's so many distractions in life, it can be really hard to appreciate the present moment. But a technique called mindfulness can help train your mind to do just that. Let's introduce Brenda Bentley, who's a psychotherapist and mindfulness expert. Brenda's in the studio with us. A warm welcome to you. Good morning. Hello there. Thank you so much for coming on in. Thank you for having me. I think a lot of people will have pricked up their ears when I uh, have been sort of trailing ahead that you're coming in to talk to us. Because I think a lot of us struggle in getting a straight head because there's so much in life. Yes, I mean, we live in a modern world with loads and loads of distractions and even more so now than ever taken away from the present moment with our smartphones and the internet and just everything day-to-day -day life it can be difficult to be in the present moment we miss it well tell us about mindfulness then okay. how does this sort of count counteract the buzz of, of today's right. modern life well mindfulness really means paying attention um, in a particular way and what that means is in the present moment and having a particular quality with that, which means non-judgmental curiosity, just noticing what is the present moment contains, re whatever it is in the present moment. And we're very busy real people, generally, and we're usually reliving and analyzing the past, things that have happened to us earlier in the day or yesterday, and replaying conversations in our head and, and examining that, or we're pre-living the future. So we're, we're going out and planning and imagining and with expectation on the way we want to experience the future. And that really takes us out of the present moment. Um, and what we do miss is because we live in our heads, you know, totally, that we could, there could be loads of beautiful things around us, um, and all the problems that exist are existing in our heads, but we miss out on the clearness of the present moment that it can contain for just a space to be able to think and not be attached to what we're thinking, to notice what we're thinking, but not be attached to it. It's probably, does that make sense? Yeah. It even you just saying that has just put a little light bulb on. But I, you're so right. You, you, you don't realize you spend all your time past and future. Yes, and it is one of those things we're so, we call it autopilot mode or automatic pilot. We do that, and it's wonderful to be in automatic pilot mode, and it's part of the human condition that we just do that. And it's great for some things, especially mundane tasks and repetitive things that we do. But when it's dealing with emotional kind of issues, it's not so good. We really, um, that's where stress, because all, all of our thoughts really create our stress. It begins and ends with us. It comes with what we're thinking, the implication and consequences of what we're thinking about and how we are experiencing our life. Okay, so something happens, we begin to um, make an implication about what that means to us, and that will affect the way that we feel. And from there, that will depend on how we react to that. Mm -hmm. And if we have um, a very chattery mind or we have a propensity to worry about things, we're probably running around most of the time with a level of stress in us, which can get to that tipping point where yeah. we're just kind of like, oh God, and then we've lost it and we've become a bit of a mess and we have to find ways, of, different ways to console ourselves and soothe ourselves. Whereas mindfulness allows you to change your relationship with your, yourself first, so your thinking and your feelings, you begin to manage them differently. And that changes the way that you become less reactive and more responsive to life. And that's what mindfulness is. Instead of reactive in those knee-jerk kind of ways, you respond. So you get to choose the way you're going to respond. And there's a, a real subtle difference in the the language there between reaction and responding, but it makes a huge difference in the way that you have your quality of life. More animalistic, which is interesting because 
We are the only animals that do all of what you've just explained. I don't see one of my cats at home thinking, oh, no, or, you know, you know, something about two weeks ago or what's going to happen in two weeks yeah. or, you know, a slug or an elephant. I mean, they, they, we're the only people, well, we're the only creatures that do this, aren't we? And, um, animals generally are very mindful. They, they live in the present moment. And yeah, I, yeah. I like to teach people that remember what it was like when you were growing up and it just seemed like the days lasted forever, summer holidays lasted forever, the school day even lasted forever. And it, it, just one of those things as we grow we have more and more um emotional baggage in our and we closets and we analyze and more experience to look at and then we have much more responsibility as well we have to plan and and do all that we create this kind of you know whole world inside of our heads that mm. takes us away from the present moment so that's a good way and animals are really great as well because they remind us of the present moment so if you are if you do have a pet and you know what it feels like to spend some time with them either petting them or just whatever and you can just really just focus on the present moment and that would be considered an informal practice of mindfulness which helps you to again just be in the present moment with with it just as it is i have a cat home with no eyes um, and he don't care. He, he doesn't know he's got no eyes, and he loves every minute of his life. He's the happiest little thing in the world. Well, that's because they there don't have go. to think about yeah, it. He, do, he doesn't just... analyse the fact he's no. got no eyes. So you've explained what it is, and now you've explained it's really obvious, isn't it? We forget how obvious it is. What do we do about it then, Brenda? How how do you help people? How do we right mindfulness? Mindfulness. Yeah, mindfulness it needs to be cultivated because we are so you know have that habitual way of being that we forget to remember that it is just now uh, you know time is is basically a measurement of the now moments so we can plan our lives and, and such but it is always just now so to cultivate mindfulness means you practice it you practice it through an informal or formal practice and so what I teach um, my students and participants is really the principles of mindfulness which is things about staying present in the moment uh, thoughts are not facts how to deal with barriers to their practice into life in and experiencing life in, in a way and being able to um, step back and observe themselves so we do that through meditation practice or even as I explained in informal practice mindful walking mindful eating um, doing the dishes in a mindful way uh, What's spending that being time. completely conscious of every action every step every yeah and it may sound boring but you actually do miss a lot of the the details because you're on autopilot because you're on autopilot exactly so I mean even if you were to imagine you know doing the dishes in a very mindful way, feeling the temperature of the water, feeling, you know, the way the bubbles are, the smells of it. So really kind of, and it may seem boring, but actually you'll take a quality that you would have missed before because you're just rushing to get to the end of doing the dishes. And obviously dishes are some of those things that probably isn't one of the pleasant, most pleasant kind of things, but you could find something and then you're living in the moment anyway, so might as well enjoy it. And what can this counteract? I was saying earlier about some phobias, anxiety, stress, yes. depression. So this can sort of, it can actually sort of help your your state of mind, can it? Oh, definitely, definitely. So, you know, when all stress comes from within and we can look at anxiety and chronic worry and even depression, all putting stress within the body. So in that way, we can learn how to disidentify or step back from our thinking and learn how to manage our feelings and being with the way that we feel instead of trying to avoid it or distract ourselves or suppress it and that's our typical way of managing our emotions mm -hmm. and that just and it might give you a momentary um, way to deal with things but you'll have to deal with it again later and so mindfulness gives you a way of being able to transcend any of that stuff by dealing with it in the moment and then letting it go you learn how to let it go and acceptance is one of the big qualities of mindfulness and that is in itself one of the big learnings is just learning to accept whatever the present moment contains even if it's uncomfortable or unpleasant and deal with it as it is well there'll be so many people who've been diagnosed with this that and the other and the popping pills sleeping pills antidepressants i mean this is definitely worth the shot yes well the nhs is now beginning to uh, recognize mindfulness based approaches as a as one of the approaches that you can use that gives the greatest benefits for overcoming 
Uh, where do people get more info and how do they get in touch with you, Brenda? Sure, yes. Because you're local, you're only down in Studley, aren't you? Yes, and I, I run practices out of Leamington Spa as well. Mm. Um, in the new year, new classes will be on. We're in the middle of running a course and they're done either as a six-week or eight-week course. Um, and in January are the new dates, so they'll be available on the website, and that's the best. And you can also download a free mindfulness uh, guided meditation from the website, so that might be worth checking out. What's your website? And the website is bemindfuluk.com. Okay. Oh, and there's a meditation on there, is there? Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. So it's a, a three-minute breathing space meditation. Mm. And if they wanted to learn a little bit more about that, um, okay. then that's a good way to do it. Thank you so much for coming in and explaining what you do and all about mindfulness. Um, it's not that it's obvious, but you haven't turned on a few light bulbs. <laughs> you do, you just forget all these things, don't you, mm -hmm. of how to, to focus. So, Brenda, it's fascinating speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Brenda Bentley there, mindfulness expert. Be mindful, uk.com is the website. BBC Coventry, March at 20 past 10 now. Yeah.